Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built them themselves. <laughs> Mateys, it's Mad Dog Merv, and I'm back again to review another pirate pistol. And I've got Aspen in here hanging out with me. So that first one I did, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's uh, one of the Caribbean pirate pistols by Lindbergh. And again, highly recommended as a like a quick weekend build. I am putting together a pirate costume for Halloween and actually for parties and whatever. I just think Mad Dog the pirate would be pretty cool. So. Today, we're going to review this next kit and go through and build it real quick. So, this is the, um, the Pirate Pistol in 1 to 1 scale, the Mikule, and what that refers to is the, uh, the action, the type of action that it has. There were several Mikule type of pistols. Um, but anyway, there's this one here. You can see you can collect four four of them. The blunderbuss, which I still want to pick up. There's a French wheel lock, and that looks very interesting. Um, the flint lock, which we've already done, has a little head on it. Pretty cool looking. And then this this Mikule here. Um, the uh, the pirate that they have on the front here is Anne Bonnie. Doesn't look much like a woman, but you know what? I am not the one to judge here, and you know, hey, to each his own. But apparently, Anne Bonnie, she was born in like about 1697, I think it was, is, is what it said. And she was born in Ireland, uh, Cork, Ireland, and moved, um, all moved west, and finally wound up in uh, the Caribbean area. Um, when she was in her late teens but she got married or well she met this guy calico jack rackman and they fell in love young love of pirates i know arg and well they got married and eventually they were captured with mary reed uh, because she was hanging around with mary and well they were sentenced to death i hear you and her death sentence was commuted along with Mary Reed's because, well, they were both pregnant at the time. However, nobody knows what happened to her. There's speculation she might have lived clear till 18 or 1782 and died then. But, you know, it's the life of a pirate. Don't really know. So that reminds me. A pirate walks into a bar and he's got a roll of paper towels on his head. The bartender says, what is going on here? And the pirate says, "Arg." I've got a bounty on me head. Thought you'd like that one. Anyway, let's open this up and let's review it, okay? Because this isn't going to take too long. Uh, still in this shrinky wrap. The shrink wrap. Oh, I picked up some tape on here somewhere. Okay. And let's open this up. I'm sure it's going to be just like the other pistol. Very um, similar. In, wow. Wow. So I got a bag of parts. It's not even a sealed bag. It's just a bag of parts. It looks like there's some trees there. We're going to check that out in a minute. Um, and here is the instructions. Apparently this is modeled after an actual weapon that uh, is owned by the House of Lloyds. So here's that part of the instructions and this part of the instructions. Yep, I'll open that in just a minute. Okay, uh, let's get into the bag of pieces part shall we <laughs> part on out there because well mm. so here's two parts that are still on a tree but look at the articulate nature of this yes I will open that in a moment the articulate nature of this is just amazing um, I mean yeah look at that scroll work that's pretty darn cool I like that uh, part of the uh, well the ramrod and part of the uh, the handle there it looks like we found an actual section of barrel oh look at the scroll work on this 
That's going to be, that really is going to be interesting. I think it's going to look nice. And there. It looks like the thing you used to put in a quart of oil. <laughs> Us old guys know that. A quart of oil and you, you know, put that in your car. A long time ago. Wow. That goes way back. Um, another part of the barrel. Uh, part of the um, caulking mechanism. Uh, more of that. Looks like the strike plate for the flintlock. I don't know what that is, but yeah. And this little ball here. Side piece. Trigger guard. And more pieces parts. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put this together tonight. And then we'll get painting on it and we'll see uh, how this turns out. This is uh, part of the trigger assembly here. So, without further ado, welcome to our review. That's the end of the review. Let's get this thing built real quick and see how it turns out. Please stay with us. So I took it in the house, uh, put in a movie, and put it all together. Went together in uh, about an hour and a half without any issues. No real gaps, no real problems. I didn't have to use any filler. But I did, once it was built, <clears throat> shot it with my 2x primer uh, gray primer that I usually use and you can see here the end of the barrel is not connected because I wanted to make sure that area got painted properly uh, the trigger guard is not on there nor is the ramrod at this time so the colors we're going to use is this custom color by House of Colors it's an older uh, paint uh, this silver and it I've painted some car projects with it before. I think it works really, really well for me. Uh, we're going to use this dark steel. It's a Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one. It's a it's a rattle can, but <clears throat> we're going to use this for most of the body of the of the gun itself. And then, uh, well, you can see I've I've shot those colors, um, the uh, silver on the hammer and the silver on the uh, the barrel, and then that dark steel on uh, the body. I could have left it like that, but with all this fancy scroll work, I really wanted to do some gold. So I used my Floquil uh, Railroad color. It's brass <clears throat> that I've got. It's a really nice gold brass color, whatever you want to call it. And I wanted to paint like the, uh, the ball that's there on the end of the gun. You can see I've got that here. And some of this other fancy scroll work. Um, give it kind of that gold leaf appearance. So once it's all painted with the three different colors... And then I take my wash, uh, Larry's bath water as I call it, which is a black wash, and I start to wash these areas. And it really causes them to pop. They really stand out. Uh, once it's dry, <clears throat> I just wipe off the excess with a damp cloth, and you can see the results here. Look at, look at that fancy engraving on this hammer. I mean, man, this thing looks really good. All of that scroll work just pops right on out. With this, uh, with this wash. Look at the barrel. This is all due to that wash and how it just really enhances, but yet it also kind of ages it and makes it look a little bit older. So again, just those basic colors. Then I shoot the whole thing with a clear coat, not a clear gloss, just, just a clear coat so that it is protected. But when I finished that, it didn't look quite the way I wanted it to on the barrel, so I had to go back and respray the silver on the barrel and, and everything was fine. So you can see how this scroll work turned out with the uh, with the wash, and then of course that gloss coat over it just or not that gloss coat that clear coat over it just sealed that in really good. And then we've got this view here of it, and you can see that there is um, a screw there on the side. Now this is just a little modeled screw, but uh, this is you know what kind of holds the pistol together there. Looking at the scroll work on the front and how it just pops with the uh, with the wash on it. So, pretty happy with how the whole thing turned out. I think it looks fairly realistic. Um, here's the underside again. Um, I like that gold on it, kind of aged looking with it. Um, something this fancy, heck, you wouldn't. I don't see why you wouldn't just put some gold leaf on it. And here it is uh, up side by side with the uh, the other pistol I built just recently. You can see it's a whole lot bigger. So, hey, hope you got something out of this. Thanks for joining us.